Hello everyone, and welcome to another fun episode. And uh, we got a few things to discuss today, mostly uh, random facts and um, some more music. So uh, we'll get into it in just a moment. But uh, one thing to uh, note is that we uh, actually got a whole lot of new crew here as we arrived here in Antwerp just the other night. And uh, you may have noticed that I now have a name tag on my door. And uh, I guess they haven't learned the name of my the spelling of my name yet because uh, they got the last name wrong. I guess I'm Jonathan Hound now. Maybe it's because I work like a dog. I don't know. But uh, I just wanted to just quickly mention that. And um, we'll get into to today's uh, random facts and music. So uh, let's have a go. All right. Hello. And yes, we actually got quite a bit of crew, uh, both on the deck side and engine side. Uh, we got some oilers and a new first assistant engineer, and uh, we got a lot of uh, unlicensed deck department, mostly ABs and uh, I think a few OSs as well. OS stands for Ordinary Seaman, uh, AB stands for Able-Bodied uh, Personnel, and then uh, our oilers are um, just uh, sanitary workers down in the engine room. They clean up any oil or spills and um, do general assistance throughout the engine room for the licensed engineers. And whenever we have, and I believe this is standard for most ships, uh, whenever we have a significant crew change um, beyond a certain percentage, we are required to run drills within a certain time frame, uh, particularly before we set sail again, uh, just so everybody is familiar with their billets, uh, where everything is, you know, their responsibilities during an emergency, and uh, familiarization overall with the vessel. So uh, you also see that I'm back in my sweater. Not only is it another laundry day, but uh, believe it or not, it is actually kind of cold over here. Even though it's the end of August and it's the beginning of September, uh, over in Europe, um, our water temperature has dropped significantly uh, from when we left the Gulf of Mexico and crossed the Atlantic. And uh, it's actually quite cold here. Uh, I was actually outside for a few drills and evolutions, and uh, it was quite chilly in just a t-shirt and jeans. So I uh, got my sweater on now. I mean, we still have the air conditioning on, but uh, it's not that bad, but it's nice and comfortable. Uh, I know when we cross back over the Atlantic to the States, it's still going to be pretty hot. It's not quite fall over there yet, but it is kind of fall here. So uh, so let's um, look at some random facts for today because um, uh, I think they're fun and interesting, and I've been told that they're super fun, so how can I refuse? Uh, now, again, all, all of these facts come from a book that was made back in 2006, so some of them may be outdated or, up, or haven't been updated yet. I have to look online and see if a new book has been published recently, because I'd love to see um, any updates or uh, some new random facts to check out. But anyway, um, the San Diego Zoo uh, currently has the largest collection of animals in the world, and I have to kind of agree, because I did live in San Diego for a few months you know, one year uh, way back. And uh, I do remember riding my bike on one of my days off from work, and it was very sunny, very beautiful, um, just riding up and down the city. It was a lot of fun, and I uh, happened across this park, and it has a lot of nice paths, beautiful scenery, so I'm riding through, and eventually I come across uh, the San Diego Zoo. And um, I didn't uh, pay for admission. Uh, I didn't go that day, but uh, I think it was because I was driving by on my bike, and uh, the admission price was outrageous. I, I mean, I looked at it, and I don't remember how much it cost, but it was enough for me to say, no, I'm not paying that price. So uh, I just rode by, but I do remember hearing um, all the activity and noise coming from the zoo, and it sounded like it was pretty immense, pretty large. So um, also in LA, the largest object ever found in the sewer system was a motorcycle. <laughs> Imagine that. I don't know how that happened, but uh, must have been quite an evening for some people. And uh, New Hampshire's slogan, live free or die, uh, which you will often see on license plates of that state uh, for cars that are uh, originated there. Uh, those license plates are actually made by prisoners in the uh, prison state of Concord in New Hampshire. So a little ironic there, if you ask me. Uh, there is a place in Norway called Hell, and... Um, 
a little bit ironic because the one time that I went to Norway, it was in winter and it was extremely freezing there. And I imagine it's cold there most of the year. And uh, for a place to be called that, I, I think, um, you know, just uh, wishful thinking. Maybe they want it to be a little warmer than what it really is. But uh, it's also kind of expensive there. So if you plan to ever do a trip there, bring some money. <laughs> uh, their food is quite expensive, even late at night, unfortunately. And uh, just a few more facts. Um, the Hundred Years' War actually lasted 116 years, and uh, Three Mile Island is only two and a half miles long, so uh, we're doing pretty well with being able to count. But, uh, you know, that'll do it for our random facts for today. I thought they were pretty interesting. And uh, let's jump into some music. Uh, again, I got to preface, uh, or preface the music that these are all for entertainment purposes. Uh, I'm not the owner of any of these songs. I'm not trying to sell or promote any of it. it. It's just purely entertainment. And the fact that YouTube hasn't shut me down yet, then uh, I think I'm doing somewhat okay. And uh, some of these tracks are actually quite long. Uh, you know, some of them can run like six or even eight minutes, I think because they repeat themselves. Um, so we may cut a few songs short. And I actually have quite a long list here. I think I have 11 songs that I'd love to go over with you. And I hope you enjoy them. Again, uh, these are songs that I try to select that are unique in their own right, and also songs that you can enjoy without having played the game. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and cut some short, and we should have enough time to go through all of them. So uh, let's start with number one. All right, uh, this one is called Fear Factory from Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Uh, I love this game when it came out. Uh, me and my brothers would play it all the time. Uh, it was just such great animation and uh, graphics, and uh, the music was great too. Uh, a lot of the tracks you have to um, play the game to enjoy, but this one, for some reason, I remember one year, it was late at night, it was actually Christmas Eve, and I had just bought a lot of nice gifts for my family, and I haven't wrapped them yet, I was kind of lazy. And it's Christmas Eve night at like 11 p.m., and, uh, you know, everybody's asleep, and I still haven't wrapped my gifts. So I was like, all right, I, I can't wait any longer. I gotta get this done. So I quietly go get some wrapping paper, and uh, I go to my room, and I, uh, I have my Santa hat on. Uh, I like wearing that during the winter when I'm home. And uh, I just started wrapping presents. And to make the time go by and to make this little chore a little less boring, uh, I started playing some music on my iPod, and I, and I remember playing this track and playing it on repeat and for some reason it, it just clicked with me so um yeah uh that, that's why i uh, selected this track for today but also for the game i uh remember there's one level that me and my brothers absolutely could not be and it's um where you're underwater and you're being chased by octopuses and they, they kill you in one hit so you have to swim away very fast uh, along this track and you have to do it before they catch you and uh, for the longest time we could not beat this one level and then I think I was homesick for, uh, from school one day and I decided to play the game because I was bored and I was just laying in bed doing nothing so uh, I'm playing it and uh, I tried that level one more time and I beat it. I was completely shocked. I was like, oh wow, we get to see more of the game now. I don't think we ran across any more trouble with any other future levels, but uh, yeah, that one just sticks out in my mind for some reason, and you know, just part of my memory. Alright, um, we're going to move into the next song, uh, but I want to um, time it so I uh, can do this correctly. Alright, so this next one uh, is a really nice song. Uh, this comes from uh, the Turing Test, which is a P PC game, and uh, I really like it because it uh, has like a, a lot of emotions attached to it. Um, you're actually a crew member on board a, a vessel out in space uh, called Europa, I think, and um, your crew has suddenly disappeared, and you have to go and find them. And you, uh, as you go through each room, and each room has puzzles they have to solve. Uh, you talk with um, a, like a, a robot entity, uh, I think his name was Tom, and uh, it, you f just learn more about the story of um, what research has happened at this uh, facility out in space and what has happened to your crew. And eventually you come across their crew quarters and you can actually go into each person's room and you know learn about them. And, uh, and 
and why they disappeared. And uh, it was just very endearing and very uh, thought-provoking. And uh, I really enjoyed the, the story. And, um, you know, it was really thought-provoking because the Turing test says that if um, you're presented with like a, a conversation um, of a, a human and of a computer, and if you can't determine which conversation is specifically from the robot or computer or from the human, it is to be said that that computer has passed the Turing test, that it can pass as a human. Uh, it has the intelligence and characteristics of that of a human. And uh, it, was a, it was a really fun game and, and a good song too. So um, it should be just about finishing up now and we're gonna jump into the next one. Um, uh, I like this next one too, because uh, it's a lot of, it's a really great game. And um, uh, I'll go over in just a minute. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, all right, there we go. Okay, so uh, this next song is called Distant Drops uh, from a really interesting game called Paper Sorcerer. And this one is mellow, it's relaxed. Uh, you know, it, it kind of sounds like uh, raindrops in, in some way. Uh, you know, it's very, very moody. And um, I, I like listening to it. In fact, the game has a lot of great soundtracks. And the game itself actually takes perspective from what is perceived to be the bad guy. Because when you play a lot of games, you're obviously the good guy. And you're going against this uh, evil entity, whether it's um, like a magician or a sorcerer. or You know, you're going against the bad guy. And obviously you get through the game, you grow strong, and uh, you eventually beat the bad guy, you win the game. But this one starts out where you see these four heroes actually go on an adventure, and they come across a wizard in a tower, and they defeat the wizard. And then you see and play as the wizard after you've just been defeated, after you've been defeated by these four adventurers. You now play as the wizard uh, locked in this prison and you have to escape and regain your powers and um, work with other like evil forces like uh, skeletons and monsters and werewolves and Frankensteins. They're all your friends uh, because you're like on the evil side. You're playing from the perspective of the uh, evil entity, which I think is very unique and, and something that has almost never been done in my opinion. And, uh, and it's actually a lot of fun, and eventually, towards the end of the game, you actually go against the good guys, what you think are the good guys, uh, which are the four adventurers, and you actually can defeat them. And uh, then you go on to, uh, you know, um, I guess rule the world? I don't know, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and, and it took gaming in a different direction, because, like I said, every game, or most games that you play, you start out as the good guy, and you just travel along until you defeat the bad guy. So, it was different. Uh, okay, um, this song actually runs long, so we're probably just going to stop it here and jump into the next one. The next one, uh, I think is awesome, uh, and I hope you like it too. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, so uh, this next one is called Washed Up from another place, or not PlayStation, a PC game called Mias Mata, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, you know, cause j just like that uh, new personnel uh, mis uh, misspelled my name, other people also mispronounced my name, which it happens. Uh, everybody, you know, fumbles it up at some point. But anyway, back to the game. Uh, you are um, a lone scientist who uh, crashed onto an island where research was being conducted into trying to find a cure for a plague that is ravaging the world. So, more or less, last year or maybe the year before is the perfect game to play during a pandemic but uh it's a very immersible world you're on this um abandoned island now and you have to travel around looking for certain types of uh, plants in order to create a cure for this plague that it has infected you and um then after a couple of days you start getting hunted down by this um fantasy beast that uh is like invincible and uh, you have to evade it while searching for these plants to create the cure and um this washed up song it uh you know it's very solemn like you're you're alone on this island you're sick and you will die in a certain amount of time if you don't find the right plants to create this cure and save your life and um it's just uh it 
kind of has like a morning feeling to it. Like you're about to begin this journey and you don't know where to go or what to do. And uh, you just have to find out for yourself. And uh, as you're traveling across this island and you see the research stations abandoned, you come across dead bodies, you're wondering what the heck happened here. And uh, you can find actually news clips and actually read about and learn what's going on in the world with regards to this plague. And um, it, it's pretty, pretty intense. But uh, I remember when I created The Cure and uh, finished the game, uh, the music was just so wonderful. And, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this track. I, I loved it. Maybe uh, in another video, I'll introduce some of the other uh, music, like when you create The Cure, it's very peaceful and um, rewarding, and then um, and then escaping the island, which w was also equally uh, emotionally attached because uh, you know you just traveled across this huge island to create this cure, and now you're leaving, and um, yeah, it, it just triggers a lot of emotions. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, jump into the next one. Uh, this one is uh, called Antipyretic. Uh, which is a, another Final Fantasy Tactics uh, music track that I selected. And um, it's kind of dire and serious. Uh, it has that kind of tone over it. And um, there's a lot going on in the battle, a lot of stake. And, uh, you know, um, people could, uh, you know, change the, uh, the outcome of the game if, if you allow them to die or if you save them. So it's a really difficult battle, um, it's hard to describe it, but it, it, it sets the mood perfectly. If you play the game and know what's at stake, you can um, understand the, uh, you know, the feeling and the, uh, the thought process into going into this battle, which, again, Final Fantasy Tactics is like played out like a chessboard. Um, you are given a move towards the enemy and then the enemy has a move towards you and you just have to outmaneuver them, outsmart them. Use actual tactics and your skills and abilities and your strength to overcome the enemy in each battle and you get stronger as you go and uh, you have to develop better tactics based on the, uh, uh, the board that you're playing on or the battlefield and uh, it's many different elements and job classes to be able to outmaneuver your enemy and win the battle. So. Um, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed this song, and um, I'll probably end up cutting this one short too. Uh, the next one will also have to be cut short, because the next one's like eight minutes long, but uh, I like the next one because it's also very solemn and mysterious, and uh, it's also from a game franchise that I really enjoy, and um, it has a lot of great soundtracks, but uh, you have to really play the game to enjoy them, so maybe this next one can be enjoyable in its own right, so... Uh, so let's check it out. All right, so um, this next one is called Dark Palace of Waterfalls and it's from Castlevania Lament of Innocence. One of my favorite Castlevania games because the difficulty curve is um, incredible and uh, pretty much anybody can pick it up and play it and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Um, it has a good story, a good battle system, you know, good inventory for weapons and items and uh, it still adheres to like a Castlevania theme where you, you go through each part of a castle or area, um, you collect weapons and items, and you eventually fight a boss at the end. And then once all bosses are defeated, you go on to the final area, the final boss, which is usually Dracula or some form or uh, death or um, some other mythical creature. But it's... Um, it's a lot of fun, and all the games have uh, great music, and, and I like this one too because, uh, like I said, it's mysterious, it's um, dark and damp, and you're going through like a, a sewer system with waterfalls, uh, caverns, and uh, yeah, there's just a, a, a slew of enemies that um, remind you of enemies that were from the original Nintendo games. So. Uh, yeah, I really like this one. I, I would listen to it um, when I was going to a, a job in between college semesters. I listened to it in my car, and I think uh, even my um, parents would listen to it, and they thought it was pretty good too. So uh, I hope um, you can enjoy the, the atmosphere, the mood. Um, you know, just imagine yourself just going through uh, you know, uh, a, a path 
pathway or a cave with stone walls lining the, uh, the path. And just uh, wondering what's around the corner. Um, could it be treasure? Could it be monsters? Could it be uh, another path? You never know. It's, it's mysterious, and, and I enjoy it that way. But um, we'll, uh, we'll also cut this one short. <coughs> now this next one uh, I like a lot because it comes from a game series that is not, you know, not widely well known, but uh, it has a great following, I think, and, uh, and a great story too. So uh, let's go ahead and reset the timer and get that going. It starts off a little slow, but it builds up and it has a great beat and um, uh, tune to it. it. This is the theme of Adol which uh, comes from, uh, well, the pronunciation of this game is a little weird. It's called Yeez, but it's just the letter Y. But it's pronounced Yeez, and this is the fourth game in the series. And uh, it's called Mask of the Sun, and it's the theme of Adol, which is the character you play as, the main character, Adol Christian. And he's an uh, adventurer, and uh, he just came from a, a previous adventure, uh, the third game, which I think is my favorite. They actually remade it into a much more detailed graphic adventure, which uh, I also enjoy. I think it's called the Oath and Felgana. But uh, this one, Wanderers from Ease, or Wise, as I pronounce it sometimes, uh, you're basically an adventurer and just fighting monsters and saving townspeople. That's basically the, uh, the premise of uh, these adventures, but it, it's a lot of fun. And uh, the game started out uh, on the Sega Genesis. And uh, I think they're up to like the ninth or 10th game in the series, and it goes to the PlayStation 4 platform. So you know a series is doing pretty well if it can start out on a Genesis and still be making games of that series well into you know this generation's uh, game systems. PlayStation 4, which is still pretty, you know, one of the latest consoles. I know they're up to PlayStation 5, but I still have games to play on PS4 when I get home. So, um, and it's funny too because. Uh, Yeez, I think, was once accused of plagiarizing uh, some songs, or at least one particular music, from the Metroid series, which was the item collection music. When you collected an item and played some music, saying, congratulations, you got this item, you know, use it in your adventure. And, uh, you know, they were played at different speeds, but the tone was essentially the same. You could hear the, the same cadences and tones while each song is being played and Metroid came first because Metroid was on the NES and I think Yeez started out on the Genesis so um, I just thought that was an interesting tidbit that I once read about online but uh, I hope you enjoyed this song I thought it was really adventurous and in fact I would play it in college constantly uh, when I was studying for exams uh, it, it just had a great beat and it got my mind off of um, just all the workload that I had. So uh, it was a good song. I hope you liked it. All right, so we're going to jump into the next one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like this one. It's um, very upbeat. It starts out a little slow, but you can hear it get uh, faster and more intense. Um, this was uh, th this track is from uh, another Sega Genesis game called Earthworm Jim 2. And uh, it's quite uh, an adventure. It's quite a story. To learn about uh, an earthworm that just uh, becomes this superhero fighting uh, character because a super suit fell on him from space, which was intended for another monster. And it just by circumstance happened to fall on this earthworm and he became earthworm again. And uh, yeah, this is the first level of music of our earthworm Jim 2, and it's called Anything But Tangerines. And uh, I don't know why it's all that, but you can't really argue that. Maybe the song could more or less be about anything but tangerines. Why would it be about tangerines? But it's um, a really great way to get you excited and into the game. Um, you know, you, you, you start out with this uh, very upbeat music, and uh, you're going around with uh, your plasma gun, shooting enemies, and getting through the level. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. And I remember uh, having this song on my iPod. And I was listening to it one trip. And I, and I was on a road trip with my dad. And uh, I played it uh, on the radio. I connected the iPod to the radio and played it. And um, I don't think he seemed to care for it too much. But uh, I liked it. And there are lots of different remixes of this song, too. Um, I think this is another game that was remade for the PlayStation 4 as 
well, lots of games can make for PlayStation 4, which is fine. But, um, yeah, I remember ris listening to the remixes, and I think that's the version that I played in the car that one time. Uh, I like that one, too. Um, it, it had, uh, it, it kind of cleaned up the soundtrack a little bit, made it a little bit more interesting, but you can't, you, you can't turn away from uh, the original. You know, the original is where, where it's at. Um, again, this is another long song. We're going to cut it short. Uh, so we're going to probably end it there. And this next one is also kind of long, but uh, it also has like a techno theme to it. Um, we'll get that started. This is called The Mind's Eye from um, a game called Tempest, which I think was on uh, 3DO, I think. I can't remember the system. It'll, I'll have it in the details down below, but... Um, yeah, or, uh, ah, the, the system escapes me, but it, the game's called Tempest. It has a lot of great soundtracks. Um, this one, I think, uh, you know, is very active and, um, you know, really gets you in the mood to play the game, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it has some lyrics here and there just to try and, and accentuate the, uh, the beat, the, the tune of the music. And, uh, again, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, and I really enjoy it, and I hope you do too. Uh, I would play some of the other tracks, but they're a little uh, odd or far-fetched or strange. And uh, they, these are also songs that I played in the car. And, uh, you know, my dad, I guess he just kind of tilted his head to the beat, but he, I don't know if he cares too much for it. But, but that's all right. Everybody enjoys some of the music. And um, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I played this one um, on occasion. Uh, all the other songs I've been listening to up to this point, um, you know, I'll play for certain reasons, obviously. Uh, I played the Donkey Kong Country when I was wrapped Christmas presents. I uh, played the theme of Idol, Idol when I was studying in college. And uh, I would listen to Washed Up if I need some calm music to relax to, as well as the uh, um, crew quarters from uh, the Turing Test. And uh, I hope that I'll be able to share more tracks from these similar games with you uh, in the upcoming episodes. But uh, for this one, um, we may cut this one short because uh, the next one uh, I just hope one day actually happens. Uh, the next track uh, I don't really listen to regularly or of that genre of game, but uh, this one I, I just wanted to include in this video and talk about it really quick. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, discuss that one. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is Casino Night, and uh, a lot of people who love retro games would have recognized it immediately. And I really hope one day I can go into some sort of casino. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. I just want to hear this being played over, you know, uh, the the um, uh, sound speakers, uh, you know, throughout the whole place. And uh, you know, it reminds me of school when we had our casino nights on the ship, or um, you know, on campus. And uh, I was a blackjack dealer, and people would you know, gamble, play money, and then use that play money to bid on prizes. Uh, I, I always hoped that one day that they would play over the sound speaker, uh, this song, the scene of it. And it reminds me of other songs that I always said that if I ever owned a restaurant or a hotel or any other kind of venue or business that there are some certain video game songs that I would play, you know, in the overhead that would um, set the mood. And uh, I gotta look for some of those songs because they are on later systems. A lot of these songs that I'm selecting are on, you know, past systems. <laughs> so, uh, there are definitely tracks that I enjoy and listen to that are on later games and systems like the Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Wii, you know, those sort of uh, latest generation consoles. So, I'll have to look and see if I can acquire some of those songs online. But, yeah, I, I really hope that one day uh, it, it'll totally make my day and probably my whole year that year if I could just walk into a casino somewhere someday and they're playing this song in the, uh, the overhead. And it would just be so fun and just, you know, play uh, a whole lot of um, different emotions for me. And, uh, like I said, I don't listen to Sonic the Hedgehog music, which is where this music comes from, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 
but uh, I know my younger brother has remixes of Sonic the Hedgehog songs, and they actually sound pretty good, and um, I know he listens to them, which is cool, but uh, I have my other original video game music that I listen to. I don't te technically listen to Sonic the Hedgehog, but, you know, they're available and to each their own. All right, so uh, I wanted to kind of end on that one, but uh, I do have one more soundtrack to end the video, and uh, there we go. Uh, this is the ending music to Mega Man X3, and uh, I think this will be a fitting music to end the video on. Uh, it's uh, another great track. Um, you know, I listen to it on occasion, and in fact, I used the same soundtrack when I was making a Flash cartoon with uh, uh, some software called Macromedia Flash MX. <coughs> I made this uh, cartoon in response to another cartoon that uh, someone in high school made in response to um, some icons that we have for our accounts when we would talk on uh, AOL Messenger, which is uh, an ancient uh, communication application that uh, is probably out of service and has been for years. But, uh, you know, I argued that my icon of Mega Man was better than his icon, which was just the letters LP, which stand for Lincoln Park. So he made a video where LP fought Mega Man and won. And I was like, ah, this is unacceptable. So I took the time to learn the software and uh, create the cartoon and have Mega Man X just destroy the icon of LP. And it was a lot of fun. And I used this soundtrack at the end of the cartoon. So uh, I think this would be appropriate to end the video on. And uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed all the tracks. And uh, I'll try and have some more for you next time. And some more random facts because they are super fun. So have a super day.